Welcome to Autocar India Quick News, your weekly recount of all the latest happenings around the automotive industry. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified every time we make a new upload. We'll start the week's news with the Hyundai Tucson that's just gone on sale in our market. The Tucson is available with petrol and diesel engine options and each is offered in two trims. The top spec diesel is further available with an all-wheel drive option. Prices for the premium SUV start at 27.7 lakh rupees while the range tops off at 34.39 lakh rupees. The Tucson's 2 liter naturally aspirated petrol engine produces 156 horsepower and 192 newton meter of torque and comes mated to a 6 speed automatic transmission. The 2 liter diesel engine churns out 186 horsepower and 416 newton meter of torque and comes paired to an 8 speed automatic gearbox. The optional all-wheel drive system comes in multi-terrain modes namely snow, mud and sand. The new Tucson is a departure to the old one in looks. It has an edgy look. The design highlights include a large grille, flush sitting LED DRLs and dual T-shaped LED tail lights. Inside the dashboard has a wrap around design and in place of physical buttons you'll find touch sensitive controls. True to Hyundai tradition, the Tucson is feature laden with a 10.25 inch touchscreen infotainment system, dual zone climate control, wireless phone charging, panoramic sunroof, air purifier, 64 color ambient lighting, 360 degree cameras and much more. The headline feature however is the level 2 ADAS tech which brings a suite of features like forward collision warning, blind spot assist, lane keep assist, rear cross traffic alerts and more. Other safety features include 6 airbags, front and rear parking sensors, ESC, hill descent control and all-wheel disc brakes. You can check Jay's full review of the Tucson by clicking the link above. From the fancy Tucson, we switch to the rugged Mahindra Scorpio. And no, it's not the new Scorpio N, but the existing Scorpio we're talking of. The model has been updated for 2022 and beyond and has been rebadged as the Scorpio Classic. To be sold alongside the new Scorpio N, the Scorpio Classic will be offered in two trims, namely Classic S and Classic S11, and will be offered in two seven-seat and one nine-seat layout. However, Mahindra has not disclosed the pricing just yet. The changes on the outside consist of a refreshed front grille with the new Twin Peaks logo, a redesigned front bumper that gets silver skid plate, as well as a new design for the fog lamp housing. At the sides the 17 inch alloy get a diamond cut finish and dual tone cladding on the doors. The rear remains unchanged albeit with a slightly changed signature tower LED tail lamps. Changes on the inside are minimal too and include a new 9 inch touchscreen infotainment system that is Android based and supports screen mirroring. There are new wooden inserts on the center console, the steering wheel has a leather it finish and the Scorpio Classic gets a black and beige combination instead of older models gray and black combo. In terms of features the Scorpio Classic gets cruise control, rear parking sensors, AC vents for the second row and steering mounted controls. Safety features include two airbags and the car maker has confirmed that there will be more added in the future to comply with the latest 2022 safety norms. Under the hood the body on frame SUV gets the new 2.2 liter turbo diesel Gen 2 MHawk engine which is 55 kg lighter than before. The engine puts out 132 horsepower and 300 newton meter of torque and comes mated to a 6 speed manual gearbox which puts the power down through the rear wheels and Mahindra claims that it has improved the fuel efficiency by 14%. Before you ask the Scorpio Classic will not be available with petrol, automatic or even four wheel drive options. You can see the Scorpio Classic in more detail by clicking the link above. Maruti Suzuki has opened bookings for the new Alto K10 ahead of model's launch on August 18. Buyers can now book the K10 for a sum of eleven thousand rupees. The new K10 variant will be sold alongside the Alto 800. Maruti hasn't officially revealed much as yet, but leaks and spy pics have given us the key details. For one, the Alto K10 will be based on Suzuki's Hardtech platform and will come powered by the car maker's 67 horsepower 1 liter K10 C petrol engine. Official teasers show a rounded front end with swept back headlamps and hexagonal pattern on the grille up front. Inside. The Alto K10 will offer an enhanced experience with a longer feature list including a touchscreen infotainment system. We'll have all the info on the new K10 on August 18 so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Over the past week Maruti also launched the CNG version of the Swift. The Swift S CNG is available in two trim options. The VXI comes in at 7.77 lakh rupees while the ZXI has been priced at 8.45 lakh rupees. 
The Swift SCNG is powered by a 1.2 liter 4 cylinder K series petrol engine that produces 90 horsepower and 113 newton meter of torque in petrol mode and 77 horsepower and 98.5 newton meter of torque in the CNG mode. The biofuel engine is only available with a 5 speed manual transmission. The CNG Swift has an ARI tested economy of 30.90 km per kg. The Swift SCNG is the 9th CNG model in Maruti's portfolio. The model is on sale via Maruti's Arena showrooms and there's also an option to subscribe the car with an all-inclusive monthly subscription fee starting from 16,499 rupees. CNG buyers also have an added option from the Tata Motors range. The car maker has launched an entry-level XM trim for its Tigor CNG. The Tigor CNG XM has been priced at 7.40 lakh rupees, which makes this version 50,000 rupees more affordable than the mid XZ trim. The Tigor CNG XM misses out on fog lamps, the black dot pillars, LED turn indicators on the wing mirrors, as seen on the XZ trim. The XM gets 14 inch steel wheels, projector headlamps, LED tail lamps, and piano black finish on the wing mirrors. The list of comfort features is shorter too. While the XM gets a tuned in audio player, 4 speaker Harman sound system and power windows, it misses items like steering mounted controls, keyless entry, push button start, a cool glove box and a rear armrest with cup holders. However, there are no omissions in terms of safety. The XM gets dual airbags, rear parking sensors, ABS with EBD and a day and night IRVM. There's no change to the engine specifications. The Tigor CNG is powered by a 1.2 liter 3 cylinder Revitron petrol engine that produces 86 horsepower and 113 newton meter of torque in petrol mode and 73 horsepower and 95 newton meter of torque in CNG mode. The engine comes mated to a 5 speed manual transmission. The Tigor CNG has an ARAI tested economy of 26.49 km per kg. Tata Motors had reason to celebrate with the punch achieving a production milestone. The 100,000th punch rolled off the Tata production line at Pune over the past week. The micro SUV has averaged a sale of 10,000 units a month since its launch in October 2021. Jeep is celebrating a milestone of its own with the Compass having completed 5 years in India. To commemorate the occasion, Jeep has launched the Compass 5th Anniversary Edition. The Jeep Compass 5th Anniversary Edition starts at 24.44 lakh rupees and sits between the Limited and Model S trim. The model is on offer with the 1.4 litre turbo petrol engine and DCT combo, the 2 litre diesel with a 6 speed manual, and the 2 litre diesel with 9 speed automatic with 4x4. The Special Edition model gets a new gloss black grille and a grey bumper garnish up front. The side sport grey wing mirrors, dual tone 18 inch alloy wheels, and body coloured cladding along with contrast roof rails. The only visible change at the rear is the 5th anniversary badge. On the inside, the SUV sports an all black colour scheme with piano black accents on the dashboard and the black headliner. Other interior highlights include the 10.1 inch touchscreen infotainment system, panoramic sunroof, and automatic IRVM, and contrast stitching on the leather seats. If you couldn't get your hands on the Skoda Kodiak earlier this year, there's an update for you. Skoda has announced that it is reopening bookings for the SUV. The model can be booked for an amount of 50,000 rupees. However, deliveries will only commence in the first quarter of 2023. The other point of note is an increase in prices. The Kodiak will now start at 37.49 lakh rupees as against the earlier one's starting price of 34.99 lakh rupees. The 2.5 lakh rupee price increase will not be accompanied by any changes to the feature set or the mechanicals. The Kodiak will continue to be powered by the 190 horsepower 2 litre turbo petrol engine which is mated to a 7 speed dual clutch automatic transmission and the power is transmitted to all four wheels. It will also retain the dynamic chassis control system and in terms of features, the top spec LNK will offer Canton 12 speak sound system, hands free parking, a panoramic sunroof, and much more. At long last, the Audi Q3 will be back in India. Audi has announced the opening of bookings for its compact luxury SUV ahead of the model's launch next month. Customers can now book the Q3 for an amount of 2 lakh rupees with delivery set to commence by the end of 2022. In look, the Q3 is the new age Audi with sharp creases and crisp lines. The new model is marginally larger than the original and there's the promise of more interior space too. The dashboard is stylish and includes a 10.1 inch touchscreen infotainment system and a 12.3 inch virtual cockpit digital dials. 
Audi has confirmed the Q3 for India will come in premium plus and technology trims with the top model set to get a panoramic sunroof, wireless phone charging, 30 color ambient lighting, gesture control tailgate and leather seat upholstery amongst others. Safety features include 6 airbags, a tire pressure monitoring system, hill start assist and more. The Indian version of the Q3 is said to be powered by a 190 horsepower and 320 newton meter 2 litre petrol engine. A 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox will be standard as will the Quattro all-wheel drive. There won't be any diesel engine on offer though. Audi is offering a standard 5-year warranty for the Q3 and has also announced that the first 500 buyers will get a complimentary 3-year or 50,000 km service package. The new Audi Q3 will rival the likes of Mercedes-Benz GLA, Volvo XC40 and BMW X1. Which one of these will be your pick? Let us know in the comment section below. And we have a scoop this week with details of the upcoming automatic version of the new Citroen C3. The C3 went on sale last month with two petrol engine options, each offered with manual gearboxes. The lineup will be complete in the second half of 2023 with the introduction of the new automatic gearbox option. The gearbox in question is a 6 speed torque converter from the Japanese supplier ASIN. The gearbox does duty on several VW, Skoda, and MG products. The C3 automatic will likely be pricier than its rival that use AMTs. However, the choice of gearbox is in tune with Citroen India's plan of not making any sacrifices on the mechanical and engineering front. Talking of mechanicals, another change on the horizon are the new third generation iterations of the 82 horsepower naturally aspirated and 110 horsepower turbo engines. The upgraded engines will feature new electronics that are likely to improve the emissions and fuel economy. BMW is continuing its 50 years of M celebrations and has just introduced the M4 Competition 50 Yare M Edition in India. Priced at 1.53 crore rupees, the M4 Competition 50 Yare M Edition is the fourth of the 10 special editions to be launched in India this year. For the exteriors, the special edition gets BMW individual paint shades including Macau Blue and Imola Red along with retro M emblems at the front and the rear as well as on the hubcaps. The 50 Yare M edition is also available with 19 and 20 inch double spoke alloy wheels finished in orbit grey and gold bronze. On the inside, the general layout is the same, albeit with some subtle additions like the edition 50 Yare BMW M lettering on the door sill, metal plaque on the center console, and on the headrest. Mechanically, there is no change in the M4 Competition's 50 Yare edition. It comes powered by a 510 horsepower 3 litre turbo petrol engine that is capable of taking the coupe from 0 to 100 in 3.5 seconds. Now let's shift focus to two wheelers. Royal Enfield has launched the much talked about Hunter 350. Prices for the motorcycle start at 1.50 lakh rupees for the base retro variant, while the metro variant comes in at rupees 1.64 lakh to 1.69 lakh rupees depending on which color you choose from the choice of 6 options. The pricing makes the Hunter 350 the most affordable Royal Enfield on sale at the moment. The bike sports a new retro design but in its frame and engine it has much in common with the Meteor 350 and the Classic 350. The Hunter 350 uses the same 349cc air-cooled single-cylinder J-platform engine but with a tweaked ignition and fuel mapping. The engine puts out a familiar 20.2 horsepower and 27Nm of torque. Interestingly, the Hunter 350 weighs in at 181kgs which makes it the lightest Royal Enfield J-platform bike. As mentioned, the Hunter 350 is available in two trims. The biggest visual differentiator are the wire spoke alloy wheels on the retro with tube type tyres while the metro gets alloy wheels wrapped in tubeless tyres. An LED tail lamp setup and stylized grab rails are also exclusive to the higher spec metro variant. The metro also goes one up in the braking department with a 270mm rear disc brake and dual channel ABS compared to retro's lower spec rear drum brake and a single channel ABS. Honda has added to its motorcycle lineup with the launch of the CB300F. The middleweight Street Fighter offering from Honda is available in two variants, namely the Deluxe and Deluxe Pro, priced at 2.26 lakh rupees and 2.29 lakh rupees respectively. The CB300F goes up against the more affordable Suzuki Jixxer 250 on one hand and the slightly pricier but more powerful KTM 250 Duke on the other. At the heart of the bike is an all-new 293cc air and oil-cooled engine that makes 24.5 horsepower and 25.6 Nm of torque. 
The engine comes mated to a 6 speed transmission with a slipper clutch. Suspension duties are handled by an upside down fork up front and a 5 step adjustable monoshock at the rear. The CB300F gets a 276mm front disc and a 220mm rear disc. Features include an LED headlamp, fully digital instrument cluster, smartphone connectivity, dual channel ABS, and traction control that Honda markets as the Honda Selectable Torque Control. The CB300F will be retailed on Honda's Big Wing network and is on offer in three colors matte axis grey metallic, matte marble blue metallic, and sports red. Honda also released a teaser for a new scooter over the past week. The model is understood to be a derivative of the Activa. The teaser image shows the faint silhouette of a scooter's headlight and handlebar section, which appears identical to the current Activa 6G. This could entail two things. Either Honda is launching the new 7G model in India, or it could be an upcoming special edition of the Activa 6G. Honda has been conservative with the changes in the past, but could address the chief omissions of the current gen Activa's lack of alloy wheels and front disc brakes and update them on the new scooter. To know what Honda has in store for us, make sure you subscribe to the Autocar India channel. Four months after its international unveiling, Harley-Davidson Neister has been launched in India with the prices starting from 14.99 lakh rupees for the black paint scheme and going up to 15.13 lakh rupees for the other options. Based on company's speedster range, the Neister gets a low riding design with an all LED lighting and is offered in three colors, namely vivid black, gunship grey and redline red. The Neister's liquid-cooled 60-degree V-twin displaces 975cc and produces 90 horsepower and 95Nm of torque. The Neister is built on a tubular steel chassis and the new design has allowed significant weight savings. The Neister weighs in at 218 kgs, which is massively lighter than the previous gen air-cooled bikes from the Sportster family. Suspension duties are handled by a 41mm Showa telescopic fork and a twin shock absorbers. In terms of features, the Neister gets three riding modes which tweak power delivery, engine braking, ABS and traction control settings. That's all for this week's news. For more automotive content, stay tuned to Autocar India and make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.